Hey, what's going on, everybody? Nick Sapinero here for the Divi Crypto Podcast. Super exciting episode because this is our first women in technology and blockchain episode. And today I have with me a very special guest, Amy Slater. Amy, thank you so much for being here. Thanks so much for having me. As a sales leader in technology and an entrepreneur, you know, why do you think there's such a, a disparity between men and women in, in STEM fields and specifically high technology? Sure. And thank you so much for having me. I, I certainly appreciate being here. And I have to say, I think it's, it's a lifelong issue. And it really starts at birth. And there happens to be this gender bending that goes on. And it's not, it's not always deliberate. And it's not always intentional. But for some reason, we think that little girls need to wear pink and boys are going to wear blue and they're going to play with trucks and girls are going to be in the kitchen or playing with dolls. And there's some kind of wiring that takes place. And why is it that we think that women may not have the capacity to, to build something, uh, to build a car, to build a computer, to program, to code? And there's just something strange that starts, I think, at birth and then transcends the education, um, you know, really from day one when kids are starting preschool. How do you find success in diverging from that path? Because obviously you were raised in the same general environment that everyone else is, and yet here you are, you know, an executive leader uh, in your position. How did that happen? Yeah, I, I, I think one of the first things I have to say is I had the good fortune of being raised by, you know, two parents that had open minds. Um, not that I didn't wear dresses or play with dolls, because I absolutely did that, but I had a Barbie car, so I, did, I was interested in cars, but my father came from um, a family of uh, scientists, and my grandmother uh, received a PhD in genetics in 1923, and you know, my dad had a, a PhD in biophysics, and you know, so I think I was raised with science, and math and science happen to be things that I was super excited about. And so you take something like sales, which women are amazing at sales, and you take something that, and that's very natural um, for women, and then you combine it with technology, it was just the natural direction. I have to say, some of it was by accident, but some of it was very deliberate in looking at where is business headed, and it was all towards technology. I entered technology in a time when the telecommunications industry was blowing up and it was just a perfect time to insert myself into that space. You know what I hear a lot of from what you just said is, is there's a, a heavy uh, focus on education. Your, all your, your whole family, whether it's science or technology, uh, has educated themselves or become educated in technology. How important do you think technology is in terms of accessing uh, these fields? Oh, it's, um, it, it's critical. Um, you know, technology uh, enables education. It's kind of, it's, it's sort of chicken and egg, yeah. right? You need to be educated to understand technology. You, have, you use technology to become educated. Yeah. And um, the access to technology is so important. And so if you think about, you know, higher, higher education, in fact, they're showing that more women as a percentage are graduating from college. Wow. And so, you know, a lot of us think about how do we solve this problem of getting more women into technology? Guess what? If you can't get them right at the beginning of education, get them as they're exiting yeah. a, a college or a university. And that's really where I take a look at those students because that's where you have the highest population of women before they feel like, I have to give up because I don't belong. Right. And, and community is so critically important to women. And so if you can catch them as they're leaving that college community and then build another community where they feel safe yeah. to explore and to innovate, that's where we're gonna capture women and we can pull them in to technology that way. Well, that's a great point because a lot of the industries that have t traditionally attracted males uh, predominantly uh, become kind of a boys club, naturally. You know, and we're starting to see the same thing with technology and especially, you know, cryptocurrency and blockchain. You know, you mentioned community. Can you speak a little bit more to that? How, how can these communities be more inclusive uh, and attract more women? Yeah, absolutely. I think it first comes with the acceptance that women have the capacity to learn and understand it. And they come with a different, a different lens. And that that lens is critical as we shape 
you know, things like cryptocurrency or any other aspects of technology, self-driving cars, right? Seat belts in cars, they're designed for men. They're not designed for women. Why are women getting, you know, in, in more accidents than men? It's because of the way that the seat belts in the cars have been designed. Right. They hadn't taken women into account. So it's the same thing in terms of cryptocurrency and the fact that women, that they account for about 70% of our spend and in our, in our consumption. Right. So if we're missing them as a target, what are we doing for the future of our economy? Agreed. I know um, our CEO, Jeff, is always talking about how, you know, there have been these sort of burgeoning fields before in finance and technology where women kind of get left behind. And I, f I feel like it would be such a shame to see this revolutionary technology skip another generation of females, you know, in, in the sense of community, you know, you came to, to Divi's community, mm -hmm. right? What did we do right, so to speak, sure. to, to make you stick around? Yeah. And, and so by, by creating a community um, to, that where it was safe, it was safe to ask questions. Because, quite frankly, I didn't understand it very well. I sort of dove in, you know, with, you know, blinders on, sure. thinking, I'll dabble a little bit in this. It seems interesting. Seems kind of fun, you know. I'm only going to invest what I'm willing to lose. It wasn't like I took some big leap in that space, but I thought it's safe to play in this playground, kind of like a kid. Is it a safe place for me yeah. to go? And so by having a community, by using something like Telegram, and it's no one ever makes you feel stupid for asking a question. I asked the same question multiple times because I couldn't remember how to do something. Yeah. And no one says you're stupid. And also I never had to wait for an answer yeah. because my time is, is pretty well booked. And so when I'm sitting and I'm trying to, you know, I also can do it on a mobile, but my time is so narrow, the window that I can actually try to solve a problem that someone's always there. It's like, it, it, it's, it's having um, that lifeline always there. And, you know, you know that someone's going to be on the other end. Sure. Yeah, well, I really appreciate you saying that. You know, we've really taken a, a lot of time to cultivate a certain sort of culture in, inside our Telegram community and outside it, you know, on Twitter and things that are less under our control, so to speak. And I, I go to, to a lot of crypto communities and it's just riddled with, we call them crypto bros, yeah. you know, who are offensive, who are unhelpful and just expect you to know everything. We all started somewhere, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And I feel like it's important that people feel that they can start with us. Um, so I'm glad that, that, that you were able to find that with us. Um, I don't want you to necessarily give financial advice, mm -hmm. but I did hear you say that, you know, you did put a little bit of money into cryptocurrency. We found that on average, women are actually better investors than men. Men get a little bit uh, cocky. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I've just never a, experienced just that. Be, <laughs> just yeah, saying, frankly. Right? Yeah, right. So, you know, and women are a little bit more methodical, think things through. And as you said, they end up spending about 70% of household income, at least mm -hmm. in the United States. Can you speak a little bit to that? You know, how do you make the, those decisions? What process did you go through to, to make your first crypto investment? Yeah, uh, it, it's, uh, it's asking a lot of questions. It's doing some research uh, and finding people that you trust to give you um, reasonable advice and, um, and, and, and really having a playbook of, as to how do I do this? And, you know, I, I, I like someone to hold my hand when I go through those things. I'm not one who likes to read an instruction manual. Right. Uh, and so uh, leveraging things like YouTube videos that might say, okay, this is, this is what you can do. This is where you can start. Sure. And figuring out how does it fit into my own um, methodology for investment? And what is my willingness to take risk, what's my risk profile, and and looking at that, and you know, and the more that you do, and the more that you talk about it, you find that other. I found that some other women were doing it, but not very many, because they, they say, oh, I don't know, uh, you know, I'm I'm not I'm not going to take that kind of risk. It hasn't gotten there for me, and things like that. And I'm not here to, you know, to to promote that. Oh yeah, every woman should so go invest in cryptocurrency. But if you are going to do something different at least do it in, in a, a safe place where there is a sense of community. That's cool. I love to hear that. It's definitely a, a big leap to take for anybody. And it is, of course, high risk, especially at this stage. Do you see crypto going further than, than where it is right now? I mean, you're, you're in technology, you're in Silicon Valley, you know 
a little bit more probably than the average uh, bear. So what do you think? Uh, do you see applications for, for at least blockchain in, yeah. in the future? Yeah, I think there's, there's absolutely, absolutely applications. And, you know, coming from my background uh, in network um, networking and in particular network security, I think uh, as long as we continue to build platforms um, that are secure, that that's something, security is super important, certainly, you know, to the whole population, but I know for me as a woman, uh, security, safety, whether it's physical security or cyber security, yeah. those things are critically important um, to, to, the, to the global economy. So I think as those things are continued to be validated, that there's absolutely uh, a, space, a space for it. Uh, as long as people feel people feel safe. Cool. I want to back up just to to your professional experience again, and talk a little bit about the fact that you know you're a sales leader. I'm I'm a developer, mm -hmm. right? I think a lot of people think that getting into technology, you just have to be a coder, you know, or be like super mathematical. F frankly, math was my worst subject uh -huh. in school, um, and I've had to learn relearn a lot of things. So maybe you can talk a bit, a bit about that, you know, the other angles that you can take yeah. to get into technology that aren't necessarily as technical or scientific. Yeah, sure. And, and it's funny you say that because when I started early on in my sales career and I would sit in these meetings with uh, systems engineers and uh, I spent some time at Cisco and I would sit there and I thought, if my friends could see me now, <laughs> I'm listening to, you know, zeros and ones and all this kind of stuff. I'm like, what am I doing? Right. What a switch, a router, uh, what, what does this stuff do? But it, it didn't matter because what I needed to understand and what I could, uh, where I could connect the dots was all around what is the business challenge we're trying to solve for? And so you don't have to be a scientist or an engineer to, to be in technology. You know, something that women are incredibly good at is, is understanding uh, customer pain and understanding empathy and, and, and putting things together, understanding the, the bigger picture. And so um, two of my three daughters have, have already launched themselves into technology, one of them on sales, one of them started in, in more of an artificial intelligence space. And so... And neither one of them are engineers. They're mathematically inclined. But my, my oldest daughter is, you know, I'm not sure I get this thing. She says, but, you know, I can, I can have a conversation about it. And I can understand where there's a need. Yeah. And so there's so many different angles in, in technology. There, there's marketing technology solutions. You know, there's being able to sell them. There's being able to, to, to enable salespeople to be trainers. There are so many avenues uh, in technology that aren't restricted. Uh, that being said, I know some amazingly successful engineers that are, that are female. And so uh, there's a place for every, every woman in technology. Right. That's, that's incredible to hear. I think you're 100% right, obviously. And I hope that we see more, you know, more women entering these fields. You mentioned something that's really interesting in, uh, in empathy, which has been missing from business for a really long time. And one of our advisors, Tim Sanders, he writes about this a lot and speaks mm -hmm. on it all the time. You know, your, your EQ, mm -hmm. so to speak. Um, have you found that that's still lacking in the, in the executive or professional world? Or is it changing at all? Um, it is changing, but not very fast. <laughs> uh, I happen to be, and I think most people would um, stand behind me and say that uh, I am a leader that I do lead from my heart. And from empathy, it doesn't mean that I, my brain doesn't kick in to have to make the hard decisions. But um, I, that's what I promote, is, is having more empathy. And I have to say that there are companies that are taking that more seriously. And we are seeing you know, maybe some more um, at, at the top of companies understanding that that's a missing element. Yeah. It's going to take some time. And it isn't restricted to technology companies. It's pretty much every company it's across the board. is across the board because major corporations have been been led um, from the brain and and by men. Right. And I'm not saying that men don't have empathy, but that's it's just a, a different wiring, mm -hmm. and it's not better or worse that, between men and women. It's just sort of what has been. Well, I think we're just starting to like acknowledge the fact that mental health is a real thing, mm -hmm. you know, a real issue, and and people do have 
problems in their in their personal life, professional life, whatever. Yeah. I think that corporations are generally built to make money, mm -hmm. of course, but there has to be a human element. Otherwise, why don't we just let machines run everything? You know it, what I mean? Exactly. And I've seen so much uh, increase in uh, the focus on wellness, and I think that's fantastic. Um, and, and you're seeing that change over time. Wellness um, and corporate wellness is a huge growth area uh, in business and one that's, that's long overdue. And I'm super excited you know, to, to be able to participate in things where we're really focusing on, uh, on employee wellness. Well, Amy, I really do appreciate you coming on the show and sharing your knowledge with our community and, and the world. And of course, other women in technology and hopefully people that are thinking about involving themselves with this industry. What's next for you? Is there anything that you want to tell us? And, and of course, let everyone know how they can connect with you. Yeah, absolutely. I'd say, you know, I'm, I'm incredibly passionate uh, about uh, women in technology and an advocate for women. So uh, you can keep an eye out for me. I am very uh, active in social media and in particular on LinkedIn, where I'm sharing content and stories about uh, inclusion uh, of women in technology. And uh, you can find me on LinkedIn under Amy Slater, and uh, happy to connect and have conversations with people, men and women, really about what, what they can do uh, to really push the cause uh, for women in technology. Well, thank you so much once again. And for our whole community, thank you guys for listening or watching, depending on where you are consuming this content. As always, you can find us on social media at Divi Project. Come and join us on Telegram. Speak to us in our very welcoming community. And this is not the last Women in Blockchain and Technology episode. We hope to expand this series. So if you have anyone who might fit the show, please reach out to us again on Telegram or on our email, which is linked in the description of this podcast. And I will see you guys for the next one. Yeah.